Hello, I am Bentham and welcome back to Factorio Towns. So in the previous episode, we set up this new section of the railway network and today we're going to be building the Blue Science Town, for which I will need your name suggestions. So this is going to be very similar, I guess, to Flaskmere. Um, there's all the same sort of themes, um, though I guess you replace the rainbow bit with more of a just blue bit um, and go from there. I am considering uh, calling it Newton because that was suggested... Um, I think it was the most suggested name for uh, Flaskmere in the end, um, and I was going to pick it on until uh, Flaskmere came along. So um, I'm going to leave that in the runnings and consider it, and if you want, you can voice your opinion on whether we should use that name or not. I think it, it fits in many different ways. Um, science would be a new thing, and Newton is a scientist, and so on and so forth. Um, there's, so there's a couple of different ways that it works. But anyway, we'll uh, get it set up. We've got the... Uh, the first section in place, uh, putting the train in place. I always forget how long the track needs to be uh, for the train to be in, in the vertical ones and the horizontal ones. Um, even Well, I, I know the numbers, but I always doubt myself at the time that I'm setting it up. I know that it needs to be uh, 15 straight pieces long for um, vertical stations and 18 long for horizontal stations. Um, and that is count accounting for an extra three um, bits of rail for the, the turning section so that it can... Um, so that you can have the two different tracks that come out onto the, the main lines. Unfortunately, you can't see very much right now, but we'll sort that uh, shortly by putting in a bunch of lights around the place. Right now, what I'm doing is putting in the necessary signals. I also spot as I arrive at the top that there are actually some signals missing uh, from this section of track here. I want to keep them spaced fairly often so that the, the trains don't end up having to wait for ages before they can get anywhere, because there's another train that was um, a while back in its way. Uh, but yes, we'll put in all the necessary infrastructure, we'll put power poles in, um, lights and all that sort of thing. Uh, but we'll not put any flooring in at the moment because we're short on stone, and I think we'll uh, have that as quite a high priority job that we need to uh, do something about the stone supply. There are a bunch of little stone deposits all around the place, um, so I need to sort of get a couple of those being mined. And then I need to go find a proper stone deposit where I can set up a town that will be around uh, for a while, because setting up a lot of individual towns for stone is a bad idea. I have been told that when I set up the uh, the map generation, um, I sort of didn't consider the fact that I would want to have a stone town, and I just left it as normal or a bit sparse uh, without sort of increasing the, um, the size of the deposit. So it's my own fault, and uh, I'm now suffering for it. I was still thinking in a sort of 0.11 mindset of flooring doesn't exist, so you don't need that much stone. You need it a bit for rails and a bit for... Uh, walls and that's it, but now with uh, concrete and, and stone and all the flooring that I'm doing, um, I suddenly need tons of it and uh, the, the map just isn't set up that way. So we've got all the, the power poles and, and things in place, we've got the lights in, um, so we now have power being delivered in. We've also got um, we've got some redundant power because we've got the, 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 uh, the power lines coming in from both directions. I wanted to keep it on all of the rails really, uh, but it means we have some redundancy if one of the power lines gets cut down by biters. Um, then there will be a backup one, um, and that will apply for everything around this loop. So we've got um, Chipton and the Southbridge section, and uh, just everything. So um, that's always a good idea, always have redundant power connections if there's a danger of them being destroyed. So uh, we're setting up the loading system, uh, well, the loading and unloading area in general for the train, just working out the correct positions of the inserters, because I always forget, and um, I was very off there. I thought, um, I think I was like two higher than... Um, it turned, well, I was thinking that the, the unloading had to be too higher than where it turned out it had to be. Um, and it ended up unloading some coal as I was testing it um, from the train. So, um, this uh, town will need, I think, four things being delivered. It will need uh, circuits, advanced circuits, uh, steel, and uh, batteries. Um, and it will provide one item for itself, or I guess two technically. It will provide iron and uh, gears. So, um, I'm going to set up that first. Uh, we're going to sort of work around the iron deposit because I'm, I'm trying to... Um, I've decided with this particular one I feel like sort of making it clever and, and compact and stuff and uh, have an efficient use of space. So uh, we've got uh, a bunch of iron miners set up, more than we'll need for a good long while I imagine. I don't think we need... well we need a decent amount of iron for this... Uh, uh, for the production of the, um, the smart inserters but it's not a huge amount so we'll probably have uh, four furnaces and that should do it. Um, there's quite a high usage of circuits as well, that's going to be a bit more difficult because we are delivering that in. Um, we'll need to have quite a high throughput on that because um, you find that smart inserter production is generally um, a massive like void for, um, for circuits. It just hoovers them up constantly because you need four uh, for each smart inserter, not to mention the, 
uh, the circuits that you use in the earlier stages of production. So um, I've got the miners in place and I've also got the basic structure for the smelters in place and I'm using a different design than what I usually use um, and it's sort of one that I forgot about for a very long time. I saw people using it um, and I just sort of ignored it um, and I didn't sort of consider how sort of useful it is. So we, instead of having um, the ore go down the middle line and having the plates come along the outside lines, you have both of them in the middle. And um, it actually, I, I'm realizing now that there are a lot more advantages to it than I originally thought, as well as it being a lot more compact. Um, in fact, I think it's as compact as you as you can make it, really, um, for uh, furnaces. Actually, I guess there's a more compact way if you used uh, belt braiding, where you have multiple, like, different types of underground belts going underneath each other in the middle. Maybe that could be done. I'll try that sometime. Uh, but yes, it makes it a lot more compact. And also it means that you don't have to worry about uh, any splitting or merging of belts because one ore belt goes in and one plate belt comes out. So uh, it's nice and simple. The ore, it, It's almost like there's just a slight diver uh, diversion. The ore belt is running along and then suddenly it turns off and in its place is the, the plate belt. So uh, we've got that going into an assembler, making gears. We probably only need one of those. So you can generally find that because in an entire like giant factory you, you generally only have like three or four assemblers for gears, so you can probably just manage with one um, in this particular town. Maybe two, because there is... A, well, actually, no, I don't think there's that much gear usage at all, so we, one is probably more than enough. Um, but yes, I decided that any gear production is going to take place on site at the place where it's needed, because um, I feel like having a, a town for gears is sort of a bit pointless, because it's literally iron goes into an assembler and comes out of it again. Um, and it's basically just like another version of, of smelting it. Um, I just end up having like um, the ore goes into a town where it gets turned into plates and then it goes into another town where it gets turned into gears and it, it it's already happened once. I don't know, it's, it's, I just feel like there's no point to it. Some people may not like that, but um, I'm not going sort of full scale like a train for every every different item in this. Um, that's more of a, uh, of a challenge thing really. This is more of sort of um, a fun project to do. It's just supposed to be um, making a, a pretty world that uh, that looks nice and, and works nice. If you, I'm I'm not explaining myself very well, but uh, you've probably got the idea of what this series is about by now. Um, but yes, we're setting up. Uh, well, we had the column for set for the production of um, the smart inserters, but I decided to flip it around because it may it means that the uh, the smart inserters come out at the front on the side of the train. Um, so that they can more easily join onto the belts um, for the, the blue signs. Um, this also means that I, I rejig some of the stuff with the iron smelting. I didn't need to, but I wanted it to sort of line up nicely. Um, so I've, I've moved everything up by like a single square there with, in terms of inserters um, and power poles and such. And then I have to rejig all the, the power poles and things um, on the, uh, the column now that everything has swapped around, all the inserters are in the wrong place and such. Uh, but yes, the gears are only used by one assembler, as it turns out, so I've just got uh, a chain of four assemblers. Um, and then on one side we'll have a belt for iron, and on the other we'll have a belt for uh, circuits. I could have put them on both sides, and that probably wouldn't have been a problem, but uh, with the throughput required, um, it might be a better idea to keep them separate, just in case. Um, because I think that, like, in total, to make one smart inserter, you need seven iron and eight circuits, I think is the number. So um, it does flow fairly quickly. Um, having one belt with both sides full uh, should be more than enough to deal with that. Uh, whereas one belt might be slightly more uh, fiddly. Uh, though the main issue will be the throughput of having the trains themselves. Um, as I've said before, at the moment I'm only focusing on getting the system operational and throughput is something I'm going to worry about later on. Um, where I can, well, in terms of factories, I'm sort of making them uh, full scale so that uh, when the throughput is fixed, um, they're already uh, ready to go, and in the meantime, they'll do as much as they can. But in terms of how much is being supplied by each train, at the moment it's terrible, um, and at some point we will overhaul the system uh, to get it uh, working a lot better. Probably once we actually have some continuous production going on, and that is what uh, the point of uh, of the Blue Science Town is, really, because um, until we have Blue Science, um, a lot of the towns are just off unless I'm there. Uh, once we have Blue Science going, uh, Flaskmere will set off, which means that Chipton will set off, and so will Redport. Um, and basically there'll be a chain reaction of all the towns actually having work to do for once, um, rather than just resupplying me um, occasionally. And, and the odd time of where if I've resupply myself in Redport, Chipton uh, kicks in and things like that. So anyway, uh, I've put a little bit in the way of circuits into the system, just so I can check that it works, and we have 
smart inserters coming out, so that's excellent. Now we all now all we need to do really is um, sort of finish off the specifics of the loading area, get all the belts um, in the right place in terms of uh, the supply for the, the the blue science packs themselves, and actually get the trains uh, coming along. But before we do that, we also need to sort out uh, the defensive system. We've got our four basic turrets um, on the station itself, but now that we know the dimensions of the town, uh, we can properly sort of encase it. I guess I already knew them really because um, the dimensions are, are bounded either by the uh, the iron deposit or the the station. Uh, but I decided to get all the um, the assemblers and stuff in place first, um, just in case they extend a little bit further. Um, originally they were going to, because I had uh, a column of eight uh, blue science assemblers, but I decided to change it to uh, two columns of four, uh, with the supply coming in the middle and um, the output going down either side. So uh, that means it's a lot more compact and we're making more efficient use of our space, because otherwise there'd be a bunch of empty room um, to the north of the town that would have nothing going on in it. Uh, speaking of which, I think, uh, well, because of the way it's turned out, there is still a lot of space in the north, so I think that's where we'll put our um, our name plaque, because sometimes it's a bit awkward trying to find the right spot for it. Um, but luckily there's this sort of perfectly marked out place, though if we, got too, if we get too long a name it might not work. Uh, we could always extend it a little bit further, it's not the end of the world, so... Um, I would say don't shy away too much from suggesting really long names. I'm probably less likely to pick them, um, just because I like something that sort of rolls off the tongue well, but you never know. Um, like Particularly names with hyphens and stuff, like Chipton-upon-Sea and stuff, I like that sort of thing. Um, so carry on with that. Much wiring on the boards. Um, I never used it, but I still very much like the name. It can it could be like the second name of Chipton, or it could be like the, the twin town. There's a town somewhere in some other nation that is, uh, that is twinned with Chipton, and it's called Much Wiring on the Boards. Uh, we can say that. So I'm putting in all of the uh, the turrets now. We've got all the walls in place. Um, using up a lot of our stone, a little bit worrying. I forget how much stone we have in reserve. I'm slightly concerned that all our stone is currently either on us or in the car. In which case we might not have enough even to build like um, one more uh, sort of defensive system of this size. Um, I don't know, I'll have to check. But uh, yeah, we'll make getting stone a high priority um, as well as steel. Um, and at some point a copper town, though at the moment it's not that urgent. Uh, seeing as all the towns are currently self-sufficient. Uh, once we actually have some automated production going, things should speed up a lot. Though I am worried that because there's so much um, abundance in the way of, of all the different ores and stuff, that we might end up uh, completing the game before we even uh, uh, get to using up all of the, um, all the ore in certain towns. Um, though finishing the game does not necessarily mean finishing the series, that uh, I might do the same thing as I have done with Railworld, because um, at the end of the day, as I've said like a minute ago, um, this town, not this town, this series is um, about the fun of it and, and the fun of building the world. So just because the sign stops doesn't mean you need to stop building uh, building factories and towns and stuff. You never know, we might find a giant lake to, to circumnavigate again. Um, and then we'd have to set up like all sorts of towns along the edge of that. Uh, but yes, we are finished now with the loading of the ammo and such. We actually used up exactly how much ammo we had on us. Um, there were 20 turrets to build, so we and and we had five stacks of um, of ammo, so that worked out well. And I've gone over to Chipton, and I've hopped on board the train over to Flaskmere because now I need to scout out the different stations uh, that will be visited by the um, by any trains that are uh, supplying uh, the the. I was I was going to say a name, but then I realised there isn't a name. Uh, the 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 new Blue Science Town. I've got to work out which cargo wagons will be loaded from what sides and such so that I can work it out properly uh, for the trains and also work out like how many trains I can do it in, whether I can use trains that are already in the system or whether I can just have one new train um, that does all of the work. Uh, next up we go and resupply uh, in the main base which is still not gone. Um, I've sort of put everything on hold over here at the moment because we need like everything that is uh, made here is sort of in towns that um, are not a priority to be made. Well, it's it's mostly the steel one. Once we have the steel one, um, a lot of the production there will finally disappear. Um, the only remaining thing after that, I, could, I think, will be... Well, it, there'll be stone for the concrete uh, production and then um, some sort of military uh, town for the, the ammo and such. So we're over in... Uh, I was going to say Flaskmere. This is Frackham. They both, they both begin with an F. It's similar. Um, but yes, we're over in Frackham to sort out uh, some coal loading because I realised uh, after next, after next, after last episode, that uh, the new train from Ironwood to Frackham um, did not actually have any town supplying it with uh, with coal because there wasn't anything going on in Frackham. 
Um, not in Frackham. Well, there wasn't anything going on in Frackham, and there also wasn't anything going on in uh, in Ironwood. So we'll set that up. We'll get a belt running around. It's a little bit sort of um, crude. It's just a belt that runs along this, either side of the train, but there's enough room for it for now, and we can always put more underground belts in or mess about with it later on uh, if it starts getting in the way of things. But uh, while I was working on that, the Ironwood train never turned up, and so I go and investigate, and of course it's died. On its way back to Ironwood, it just ran out. So we'll quickly... Uh, dump a bit more back in. I forget how much I put in, but it will very shortly arrive in Frackham and be properly supplied anyway. Um, but now we'll go down to uh, to Redport, I think, for a second. Uh, oh no, first we go back over to... Ah yes, I was going to Frackham and, th and then I remembered that I did want to hop into Redport for a second to check what side the uh, uh, the advanced circuits are loaded on. And I'm starting to get a picture of how I want the, um, the different items to be delivered to the Blue Science Town. Um, and as it turns out, it's a lot easier than I expected, though there is one um, sort of slight cheaty thing that I need to do. So we'll hop back into Frackham and uh, we're going to set up an extra bit of production here. And this is going to be a temporary thing uh, just while I get um, uh, the Blue Signs Town and some other stuff sorted out. I'm going to put in a small amount of steel production. And this is a little bit cheaty because it's not at all anything to do with Frackham. Um, but I need a steel supply um, that is connected to the rail network so I can make the Blue Science packs. Um, and I want to really get that done before I go and find a steel town. Um, the thing is, I want a steel town to be near a stone town because they've got a, a lot of sort of ways they cooperate, so um, we'll have to work that out. But in the meantime, we've got this one little um, furnace that will be working away making steel. It won't make very much, so uh, our production of blue signs will be very limited while we're relying on that, but um, it'll allow us to get a little bit of science running uh, as soon as the, the blue signs town is fully operational. Um, and then our next town, I think our very next town, will be uh, a steel one, probably followed by stone. Um, and then we'll work it out from there. So now that I've got in my head the route that I want the train to take, I start setting up the uh, the unloading area as necessary. Um, as it turns out, the three sort of other components needed for blue science packs are all going to be in the same cargo wagon. Well, it's only partially chance. I sort of engineered uh, most of it in the end, but um, it sort of works out well that way. Um, and then we also have... Uh, so we don't also have that was steel, that was one of the three, and we also have circuits to deal with. Um, I don't yet have a plan for that, I sort of forgot about it for a minute, and then by the time I remembered it was a bit too late, so um, it's something that we'll sort out next episode. We might just have one of the circuit trains, um, I forget what the situation, is with, uh, the situation is with circuit trains, but I feel like we might have one that's just circuits, I think it's the one that goes to Flaskmere, so that can just take a quick detour uh, around to the Blue Science Town, though it does turn out slightly awkwardly because it has to take the long route um, to do it because uh, one of the uh, junctions isn't so, sort of set up so that you can go uh, from Chipton to uh, the Blue Science Town via it. Because I don't want to set up any loops. It will only cause um, horrors and, and death and destruction as the trains all flip around um, and stop loading or unloading anything properly. Uh, but yes, we have now all of the inserts and stuff set up. We'll quickly finish off uh, putting in the, the right uh, instructions for the smart inserts, and then we'll put in the filters for the train. So we've got the filters for the three um, sort of advanced components and then in the back we'll have a filter for uh, the blue science packs themselves and then we need to set up the uh, the timetable. So the way it's going to work or the way I intended for it to work was that it would go to Redport then down to Frackham down through the blue science town and over to Flaskmere and it turns out it's a very nice straight line um, and then as once it's got to Flaskmere it uh, jumps back to uh, red points once again. But as I'm on the train, I realize I've messed it up because what I've done is I've sent it to, well, actually, no, I've, it's not what I've done with the train. Um, it's what I've done with the station. I put the unloading section uh, system or whatever on the wrong side. So it's parking up. Um, well, if it followed the same system as I've already given it, it would park up um, on the southbound uh, section of uh, the Blue Science Town where the loading isn't and, and the unloading isn't. So um, I decided to make a quick change. Um, it now goes to Flaskmere and then goes back to the Blue Science Town on its way to uh, to Redport. And it works out a little bit more awkwardly because um, if it went the other way, then it would sort of make sense it's going in the order of the production chain. Um, but it still works this way. It just means that it'll take a while for changes to the system to sort of propagate down to the, uh, to the end of the line with Flaskmere, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It could give you more warning for something going wrong uh, or things like that, but it could also slow down... Um, the implementation of fixes to the system. So uh, we'll see. Um, it should be fine. We could always rearrange it. We could always move the, the loading and unloading system to 
the other side of the blue side town. We'll, we'll work it out. The, where, like Once things are operating, we'll see how it goes and uh, make the decision then. So I've set up the loading of the uh, the batteries into the train. I didn't give it long to actually sort of fill up, but that's fine. We're just sort of getting the basics set up for now. And then when we arrive in Flaskmere, we need to sort out the unloading of the blue science pack. So we'll put in the, um, the smart inserters and such. We'll have to move around this belt a bit so that we've got enough room to uh, move things comfortably. Um, and then we just need to connect it up to the uh, the right belt. I think we've got it going onto the green science belt. Um, I've left the side of that empty, uh, ready for this to arrive. So we just need to connect that up. And then we will have some, some science, at least once the, the blue science packs actually arrive, which could take a while because of the way the train's gone wrong. But yes, we'll have a couple of underground belts sort of maneuvering around everything. Turns out slightly awkwardly, but it works. Um, and then uh, that's ready to go. We just need to take the train back over to the Blue Science Town. Um, and then we'll finish it there. Um, so don't forget, I need some name suggestions. Um, go crazy. Uh, voice your opinion on Newton, perhaps. Um, or maybe Newtown, that's also an option, but I, I feel like Newton makes more sense. But yes, I shall say goodbye, thank you for watching, and I shall see you next time.